Now I'd like to take a moment to talk about another popular way to do narrowband imaging, which is to combine narrowband filters, especially dual-band, tri-band, or quad-band filters, with one-shot color camera sensors. So to begin with, here as an example, I'm showing the Optolong filter, which is a dual-band filter. You can see that it basically passes two emission lines, so it's not just a single one. This is why it is meant for one-shot color camera uh, sensors because they have another set of filters. In other words, if you put this extreme filter in front of your, your uh, monochrome camera that doesn't have any other filters, there would be no way to distinguish between the uh, photons that are coming through that are O3 and the photons that are coming through that are HA, right? It would all just be gray. So the only way to distinguish is you need another set of filters, and that comes with its own vagaries. I'll talk about those in a second. So what makes these kinds of filters good for one-shot color camera imagery is that you're going to then be able to reject or ignore um, all of the lines that are typically light pollution lines. Here we have a mercury line. This is very typical of the high pressure um, uh, you know, street lights, things like that. We also have the low pressure sodium lights, and those are going to have these uh, sodium lines here. Uh, and so those lines just don't even, they're totally rejected, will not come through the filter. And that means that the sky will be dark to observe these two emission lines. Now, I'm going to say that the issue then is when we do double filtering, we have a, a couple of issues. One is this matter of transmission, right? Where we have Incoming photons, let's say this is the HA, uh, coming through the dual band filter, but it is passing this uh, HA information. Well, there's going to be a small drop in terms of the total transmission just because of uh, just the nature of filters. So we have a small drop in the number of photons that get through. And then these photons are only going to go through uh, the filters on the uh, one-shot color camera sensor that are colored, you know, red. It's going to be the red band filters, right? They're going to pass through. But then again, this filter also has its own transmission efficiency. So again, there's going to be another drop, small drop. Uh, now, if these transmissions are all very high, then, you know, maybe it's not a big deal. But the physics is that every time you go through a filter, you are going to be losing light. So now let's look at a graph. Again, these are provided by uh, John Upton, who produce these. You can look it up on cloudy nights. And uh, I'd just like to point out that here we have, you know, uh, the transmission of the red, green, and blue uh, for these one-shot color camera imagers. And what this graph is showing is it's showing the difference between like, uh, in this case, it's the Astrodon filters compared to the filters that you find in the one-shot color camera uh, sensors. So the Astrodon filters have this very well-defined, uh, you know, red, green, and blue here, uh, whereas you'll find these, you know, the dotted lines, these interesting curves indicate the transmission that you get for the one-shot color camera imagers. And what is interesting is not only, obviously, are they a little less, but it's not such a big deal, one of the interesting parts is that you'll notice that in the blues and the reds uh, and in the green, there's a big crossover in the wavelengths of light that they let through uh, from adjacent filters. So you'll see here we have green coming all the way into the red area. The, again, I'm just looking at the dotted lines here. Notice how the red has a little bit coming, the tail goes all the way over to where the blue is. And so this blending of different wavelengths of light, this overlap in the one-shot color camera filters means, and this is just, a, forget about narrowband, this means that in general, when you do a one-shot color camera image of the sky, the colors tend to have not as much contrast. This is something that I don't think is generally appreciated. This is necessary when we're trying to create sunlit, daytime you know, earthbound views of the world around us. To get the colors to look, you know, like what we see with our eyes, that's what's necessary, is to have this degree of overlap. But when we're looking at astronomical objects, especially objects that are, uh, you know, emitting in particular wavelengths of light, they are uh, in perhaps multiple wavelengths of light, 
But if we want to be able to see those colors clearly and well in a well-defined manner, then having these filters be very distinct in terms of where their cutoffs are helps. That helps increase the contrast of color in objects. People often wonder when they take images with a one-shot color camera imager of a galaxy, how come they can't see the blueness of the galaxy very well, not as striking as when you use a monochrome setup in specific, like in this case, the Astrodon or Chroma filters. That's why. The reason is because we have these overlaps between the different channels, and that means that you're going to have a certain amount of light in all of the colors, and that whitens the image up, if you will. That means that there is less color distinguishing contrast. So again, we're just comparing you know, just a, a filter that you'd put in front of a monochrome camera to the, uh, the RGB filters in a one-shot color camera imager. But then on top of that, we have to, if we want the full quantum efficiency, the full response of the system, then we also need to take into account the response of the sensor itself. And one-shot color camera sensors, you know, have a particular response. This is the curve, the curves that you would get using, you know, both the Astrodon and just the... Uh, uh, the RGB filters that are in a one-shot color camera imager taking into account what the response is of the sensor itself. In this case, the sensor is the IMX429. And so you can see, obviously, the QE drops uh, dramatically, you know, certainly in red. Look how far down it comes here, below 50% for most of the time. And now the part that I really want to get to is that pretend you're using a dual-band filter, right? I mean, what are we looking at when we look at a dual-band filter? Well, the hydrogen alpha line is going to be here. And this is going to be the effective, you know, response that you're going to get at that particular color of light. And this doesn't even account for the fact that we have the, the whatever the transmission is of the dual-band filter. This is just showing us here the response of the filter plus the sensor. So now we have another filter. So it's going to drop this down a little bit more for whatever that HA line is in combination with an OSC camera. And of course, we have, again, the, uh, the O3 line is going to be showing up here. That's the overlap between the blue and the green um, that we would normally get here. But that gets much more confusing when we look at the RGB overlap. It does exist here, but it exists at a much larger degree, right? Uh, and so optimizing when you're processing, now in terms of processing, when you are trying to optimize narrowband imaging, narrowband lines, in terms of how they are detected through the RGB filters because of this response curve, it's not clean. And so I just want to indicate that um, it is different than if you were using a monochrome camera in that sense as well. So I feel, this is my personal feeling, is that doing this kind of imagery, I know it's very popular, but I think it is more complex because of these very issues, uh, because of this, uh, the overlap between the RGB filters, because of the double filtering, that means the hit in transmission that you get, it is harder to get, you know, as good of an image. And so that just takes more processing and more attention to detail and, you know, those kinds of considerations. So I just wanted to say that about the dual band filtering that's very, very popular, uh, but people do it all the time. I think it just goes hand in hand with the idea that whenever you're doing one shot color camera imagery, it, it is simpler to acquire, but in my mind, it comes with some extra need for paying attention to things when it comes on to the processing side. And I think that is often a disconnect, especially for those that are beginning astrophotographers. Yes, again, it's very easy to acquire the data, but it actually takes a little more effort to get that same quality data uh, on the processing end.